Hello and welcome to Smeg Chris Review. I'm your host, Chris. One moment, please. All clear. Just making sure the trolls aren't around. It's now time to review Transformers The Last Night, a Paramount film. Here's my homemade poster because Paramount keep nicking my monetization rights when I use one of theirs. They are Transformers, I promise, just not the robot kind. Now that I focus on just the one movie, I can give you an in-depth ramble, I mean review. Once again, it's directed by everyone's favourite director, Michael Bay. Yes, I still do sarcasm on this show. However, I don't mind him. I did enjoy Armageddon and the Bad Boys movies. This new Transformers movie is pretty much what you can expect. Explosions, chase sequences, explosions, fights, explosions, a wee bit of romance, explo... You get it. At the beginning, we are told that Transformers have been on Earth since King Arthur was around, and we see a pretty cool epic battle showing us what happened. We then skip to being introduced to new characters and some old ones too. Some we haven't seen since the third one. Then in space we continue Optimus Prime's search for his creator and he does find her, but of course she's evil. She then somehow turns Prime bad and sends him back to Earth to retrieve this powerful staff weapon that can restore Cybertron. But of course the good guys are after the same thing too. Sounds pretty simple but the film still manages to muddle things up and at times it becomes difficult to understand what is happening. I found that scenes jumped ahead with leaps of logic, making it very difficult to follow. Not always though, it's just that when you think you've got a grasp of what is happening, something changes and you just get all confused again. The nostalgia of old characters returning was great and injected a much needed connection to the original trilogy, something the last film lacked. However, only one, Mark Wahlberg, returned from that one. The new characters were good enough but some of them got sidelined way too much. Oh, and as for Optimus Prime, he wasn't in it that often. If anything, Bumblebee was seen more than any other Transformer. Which isn't a bad thing, I think Bumblebee's everyone's favourite, right? As for the action, a lot was happening on the screen and often became overbearing. But what else is new for these films? The other times were pretty good viewing, however I didn't see anything I hadn't seen before. Tell you one thing I did notice was, usually in a Transformers film you see the Transformers actually transform. You didn't see quite much of that in this one. Like for example you're about to see a car transform and something blocks your view and then when that thing goes away, they're transformed. Hmm. It didn't happen all the time, just enough for me to notice. Usually with these films we get a strong final act, however with this one, it just didn't feel like we did. And then it ended suddenly with no real aftermath. I may sound like I'm dissing the film, and I guess there's good reason to do so, but I still enjoyed it. Just not as much as the previous ones. Oh, and just warning you, it looks like there may be another one on the way. Despite my misgivings, I give Transformers the last night a... Uh... I promise they are Transformers, just not ones in disguise. Well, I hope you like this new version of Smeg Chris Review. It's time for me to go. Thanks for watching and subscribing if you have. Until the next time, peace out. So seriously, do you like this new version of Smeg Chris Review? I know I certainly do. It's a lot easier to film. I mean, I'm just reviewing one film and nothing else. No news, no trailers, nothing. Which is good because if I'm going to go to the cinema more often, I'm going to be making these videos more often and I need to get them online as soon as possible. To me, it feels weird that I'm reviewing just the one film. And I'm pretty sure it feels weird to you guys too.